Hi, this is a book nook based on Death Study from the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. To begin, I made the wall, ceiling and floor. I used 3mm hardboard and cut it into two 20 by 20 centimeters for the walls and two 20 by 10.5 centimeters for the ceiling floor. I glued one wall to the floor and one to the ceiling and I used a strong wood glue and masking tape to secure the joint as I didn't actually have any clamp. I also made sure that I marked the ceiling and the floor pieces. Uh, this will become very important later as you will need to know which is which when you are adding the details within the book nook. As you'll see, I am planning the inside of one of the walls. Uh, this particular wall is the wall attached to the floor piece as I figured this would be a prominent place to start and probably easier to begin with the floor rather than starting with the ceiling area. I'm going to carve in some channels with a craft knife and these channels are going to be for disguising electrical wiring for some lighting that I'm going to add to the walls as well. I've also made a note of where I want the back wall and I'll also make a plan of the shape of the back wall onto the floor of the book nook. Now I made a window by tracing the full scale of the window that I wanted onto paper, making sure the measurements were correct and that it fitted my book nook how I wanted it to. And then I used a sheet of acetate which I bought in a pack, however you can probably recycle acetate from product packaging, it's widely accessible and available. I secured it to the page and then using a relief outliner for glass painting, I traced on the pattern. I'm using a diamond lead pattern for my windows, uh, that's just the style that I wanted and I felt that would fit the study better. After I had leaded all of the windows, I then went around the outside to create the outer lead, filled in any gaps added some decoration and then I tidied up using a cocktail stick or a toothpick. The relief liner takes quite a while to dry so once I'd finished and I was happy with my design I removed the acetate from the paper and I just hung the piece on the nearest available object which for me happened to be a vase. Um, <laughs> I think it takes about 72 hours to dry fully which is quite a long time. So just be prepared for a long drying time if you do use the same technique. Uh, next I made a window frame with cardboard and I actually layered up pieces of cardboard to create moulding and depth in the window frame. And then painting it I used a medium brown colour, I also painted the back just in case, and I used darker shades and tones of brown and also a grey black colour and a couple of washes to create that depth and aged look. And then I highlighted with a yellow ochre colour and made sure that bits that I wanted to see more prominent and further forward than they actually are, I highlighted them. Which gives the illusion that the window frame is thicker than it actually is. If you'd like to see a full tutorial for the window frame, please do let me know in the comments below and uh, we'll get it done. I created a wooden frame to support the window at the back of the book nook. I wanted to leave a space at the back as well for some wiring and some other um, items such as the backdrop that we can see through the window. So these pieces that I am cutting here, these are actually basswood, 2 centimeters by 20. And these are going to be supporting a curved frame which the window is going to sit in the middle of.
So to create the curved pieces, I actually soaked lollipop sticks or strips of basswood you can use as well uh, in boiling water for about two hours. You can also leave them overnight in water uh, and they become supple and easy to bend. And I bent them around a large glass jar and held them in place with rubber bands and let them dry overnight and uh, they dry in a rounded shape so I was able to cut the pieces that I need and here you can see that I'm actually spacing them out so that they allow room for the window frame without being seen through the window um, I'm also securing there you see there's a gap down the side on the uh, open edge of the book nook that is where the other wall actually sits and I've made a line as well as a guideline so I know where the other wall will will uh, come in to the flooring area so I'm going to use some wood glue and some masking tape to secure those curved pieces onto my strips of basswood here and this is going to make the uh, supporting frame for the back wall. Okay, so then I used some um, thin black card and I stapled my uh, window to the back of it, making sure that I cut out the correct size hole that I wanted. You don't want to make the hole too big because otherwise you will see it through the window frame. And then I used some more cardstock, the same that I used for the window frame, and created more wooden mouldings. Just by layering up strips of wood to the pattern that I wanted. Um, I wanted these to sit around the window in a certain way so it reflected old style wooden panelling in, you know, in an old study or an old library. Once happy with the sizes of my moulding, I painted them in the same way that I painted the window frame with a medium brown, going in with some dark washes and highlighting areas in the yellow ochre colour. And again, uh, if you would like a tutorial for the window, I will also include how to make these wooden moulding pieces from card. Okay, so once I was happy with all the paintwork, I then attached them to the, uh, the black card where I stapled my window to. And we're going to attach that to the wooden frame, which should be nice and dry now. There we go. Look at that. Snazzy. And then we're going to glue it into the book nook as well. So I'm using a very strong uh, wood glue to make sure that it's nice and sturdy. So next up is the floor. This was actually one of my favourite things to make. So I'm actually using a baking parchment, uh, but tracing paper, it's the, it works in the same way. I used the paper inside the nook itself, was able to accurately create uh, the floor shape by pushing the edges of the paper into the corners and the awkward areas and then um, scoring with a pencil and I could create the exact floor plan. Um, I used coffee stirrers uh, cutting half lengthways to create 
these really thin pieces of wood and uh, I wanted to create a pentagram on the floor. So I traced the design of the floor and then put the tracing over so I could glue the pieces in the correct place. Later on I'm going to be filling this with some resin as well. So here I, uh, I cut a circle the same size as the pentagram circle from some basswood and this is going to be the outside of the star. I'm just making sure it's nice and sanded. To make sure I got the exact <laughs> shape of the star, I pop the circle underneath the uh, star on the tracing and I scored it gently with my craft knife to create an imprint of the star shape onto the wood. And then after reiterating that exact shape, I then carefully cut it out from the circle and made sure that I put each uh, part in place. I would like to say I did also make a note of which piece was which, so top, left, bottom, for example, so that I didn't get any parts confused or mixed up. But yeah, I did, I did want to make a feature of this curved area and this curved window area as well. I thought the pentagram was very fitting. Then I used these one centimeter wide lollipop sticks as floorboards. I wanted them to be diagonal just to create more depth and width within the book nook rather than uh, if they were lengthways I felt it would look really really skinny. So I tried to create a bit of an illusion with the flooring. Um, notice as well, if I have to cut off the end of the, uh, the lollipop stick because it's not quite long enough to reach the full width of the flooring, I've made sure that the join lines are in a line, I suppose. They're parallel. They run parallel to each other. This was just to kind of emulate that there might be rafters underneath the floor that you would nail the floorboards into. So I also shaped them around the pentagram area of the floor as well and uh, yeah, using wood glue, securing them onto the tracing uh, paper or uh, baking parchment. Once all my pieces had been glued in place, I just went around the edge of the pentagram and neatened up any rough edges. And then I infilled with some leftover pieces of curved wood from my curved lollipop sticks that I made earlier. test fit make sure everything's fine and then I painted the floor with a dark reddish brown with some purple undertones I also painted the edges of the book nook as well I painted the pentagram purples and violets with the star being black itself I'm gonna overlay that with resin as I said and then I used some satin finish varnish to finish the floor I wanted to keep a kind of more purpley red colour rather than loads of reds. Because I wanted to give it that ethereal spiritual feel for death study rather than horror or gore. I didn't want it to be scary. So 
So then I secured the floor using a, another wood glue uh, and clamped it in place overnight and made sure that it was completely flush to the bottom of the book nook. That was part one. Thank you so much for watching. Part two will be available shortly uh, and there will be a third installment as well. Please like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you think and uh, yeah feel free to tag me in your projects on Instagram. Uh, here's a sneak preview of what we'll be doing in part two. Thank you, bye bye.